Hello and welcome to episode 13 of the Survival Handbook. Today we're going to be teaching you how to gather resources as efficiently as possible and more specifically what creatures and tools to use in order to do so. We're going to put up 10 mid-game resources and tell you the most efficient ways to collect them. If you want to grow your skills and all sorts of other arc related stuff, subscribe now so you don't miss anything. So the first resource I want to talk about today is Kite. You need chitin for a variety of things, so it's important to know how to get the most out of the bugs and arthropods you kill. Megatherium are the way to go for chitin. Megatherium get a 150% damage multiplier when attacking bugs just for being a megatherium. They also get a bug killer buff, which activates every time you kill a bug and multiplies your damage by 250% for a grand total damage multiplier of 375% against bugs. But they're also the most efficient chitin gatherers. The Sabertooth and Theory are also pretty great chitin gatherers, but using a megatherium is definitely the best way to get chitin in my opinion. If you want one, I'd recommend using a trap for them since they can be a bit difficult to deal with, especially if they've got that buff. The saddle unlocks at level 52, so this shouldn't be too much of an issue for most players. Speaking of chitin, a lot of you are more than likely making your own cementing paste, meaning you're mixing stone and chitin together in a mortar and pestle or chem bench. Perhaps consider not doing that and getting a Beelzebufo instead. I mentioned a few ways to gather cementing paste efficiently in my last video, but unfortunately left the Beelzebufo out. When the Beelzebufo harvests bugs, it directly collects cementing paste in chitin. Not only that, but it's one of the most efficient chitin gatherers in the game, so you get two times the value from it. It's perfect. Just use Ebola and some Trank arrows to knock them out and you've got yourself heaps of cementing paste. You can unlock its saddle at level 40, so this is a good one for most players. Obsidian is one of those resources that you need sometimes, but not always, but when you do need it, you don't seem to have enough. You might be surprised, but the Anki has your back here. This guy is one of the best obsidian gatherers in the game. Pair him up with a Quetzal, Argy, or Wyvern, and you've got a super efficient resource gathering machine. Obsidian might not take up much of your time, but you might as well gather it efficiently if you're going to take the time to gather it at all. The Anki Saddle is unlocked at level 36 and is a really basic tame. You should definitely have one or more of these by the time you need obsidian. Organic Polymer is the perfect replacement for crafted polymer. If I use obsidian, 9 out of 10 times I use it to craft some polymer, but by gathering organic polymer, you can make crafted polymer obsolete. There are a few different methods of collection for this resource, so let's start with the most efficient. The sword and the wooden club will harvest the most amount of organic polymer from creatures that drop it, like the mantis and kairuku. This is the way I gather my organic polymer most of the time, but if you're on extinction, you can just use corrupted nodules. There's another method that many players swear by though, it's the gacha. You have to kind of get lucky with what the gacha will produce, but if you get one that produces organic polymer, you're in a really good spot for resources. You can simply store the gacha crystals for when you need polymer and voila, infinite polymer. Gachas can be tamed by dropping some structures in front of them, so they're pretty easy to get if you ask me. The next resource on the list is crystal, and odds are you're going to need this at some point or another. Most maps require you to harvest crystal directly through crystal nodes, and for the most part that's what you'll need to do. You might be interested to find that the pickaxe is the most efficient gatherer of crystal on the arc. That's right, Ankies won't cut it here, although the Yankee would be faster. Anyway, the Mantis holding some pickaxes is the answer here. The Mantis in this game are honestly terrifying and pretty much require you to be a badass to tame them, but if you can survive the process, they're gonna do you wonders. You can equip items in their claws to gather resources for you, or even swing at some enemies with some good old classic killer bug dual wielding swords action. You know, like how mom taught you. Anyway. Equipping some pickaxes to their claws will allow them to gather all the crystal you need. The Mantis Saddle unlocks at level 45 and will only eat death worm horns. So, uh, yeah. Good luck. Next up on the list is metal. I don't know what this video would be without a quick talk about metal. I've been talking a lot about the Anki whenever metal gets brought up, but guys, the Magmasaur is better at collecting metal than an Anki. Only slightly, but also they're freaking Magmasaurs. Look at this thing, it's a walking apocalypse of badassery that's actually got loads of super cool attacks to keep you safe. While they're fantastic defenders, attackers, and gatherers, they'll also cook food and smelt metal for you too. Of course, if you do that, make sure it's got loads and loads of food, because it goes through it fast when smelting is enabled. These guys are really, really tough to get though, since they spawn exclusively on Genesis Part 1 in the lava biome. The next resource on the list is Silica Pearls, and these are a bit of an interesting one. Usually, I only use Silica Pearls to make electronics, but from time to time, you'll find you need them in their raw state. 
It's a good idea to have some of this on hand for when that time comes. The best silica pearl gatherer is an anglerfish, by far. The anglerfish can collect silica pearls from ammonite, eurypterids, lampreys, and trilobites. Of course, you can collect silica pearls at the bottom of the sea too, but much less efficiently if you ask me. With this method, you'll collect more silica pearls than you probably need. However, if this is a bottleneck for you, it could be the fix you're looking for. You don't need a saddle for these guys, so just watch out for all the other ridiculously terrible creatures underwater and you'll be good to go. The next resource on the list is stone. You might be thinking that stone isn't exactly a mid-game resource, but stone is such a basic resource that you'll need it for some pretty random stuff. Might as well have a bunch of it on you, you know? The Dodic is by far the best stone gatherer out there and makes stone weigh 75% less when it's in its inventory. Their saddle unlocks at level 34 and are relatively easy tames. They roll up into a ball after taking a certain amount of damage, and once they're rolled up into that ball, they'll take much less damage. Bring a few extra trank arrows or trank darts to make sure they get knocked out the first time. Wood is a resource you'll find yourself gathering so frequently it can be truly annoying. The absolute best way to gather wood efficiently is through the use of a chainsaw, but if you're on a map that you can't unlock it on, make sure you get your hands on a Castoroides or a giant beaver. These guys are incredible wood gatherers and take it for reduced weight as well. They're also kind of way tougher than they should be, in my opinion. Their saddle is unlocked at level 61 and are relatively easy tames if you can single one out, so maybe tame one? I'd be kidding. The last resource I want to talk about today is flint. You'll need flint for gunpowder, among other things, and we'll need a ton of it. A good old metal pick is the most efficient way to gather flint, but the Ankylosaurus will generally gather nearly the same amount of flint, just a little bit faster, so it's kind of up to you how you want to gather it. You could always go down the mantis holding a pickaxe route if you want, or even use a gacha to get yourself some flint, but with the amount you'll need, it's important to figure out a method that works well for you. The Anki, personally, is my preferred method, particularly because I play with boosted gathering, so it just ends up taking less time for me. If you want to learn more about the Ark, click on the video on the left. YouTube thinks you'll like the video on the right, so like, maybe click that one. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you found this content helpful, and as always, thank you so much for your time today, we'll see you in the next video.